For centuries, this question has plagued us. Well, more like half century, I guess, or well, at least a couple decades. Which is the better tool watch? The Rolex Submariner or the Rolex Explore 2? Now that I own both, here are my thoughts. I know, right? Everyone was talking about which is the better tool watch in the coffee shop this morning. I know, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. My name is Shane Walls and I make my living as a fine art nature photographer who truly depends on his tool watches and are an intricate tool in my photography process. Now, thank you again for watching. I really do appreciate it. I know I'm not as witty or as clever as my British counterparts here doing watch videos, but um, California public school system here. But so thank you again. I really do appreciate you watching these videos. Shane, it looks like you have a coffee stain on your shirt. Oh shoot. Hopefully this is a little bit better. This is all I had in my truck. Okay. Okay, my opinion on which is the better tool watch, the Rolex Submariner or the Rolex Explorer 2? Part one of a two-part video. Now I've had the Rolex Explorer 2 now for just over a year and a half-ish, and the Submariner just over about a month and a half-ish. And now this is, I'm trying to keep all my personal bias out of this, but it's impossible depending on, you know, what I use them for. So I, I did my best on this. But here's a criteria I came up with to judge each watch. I'll rate each watch between 1 and 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, on its history, durability, how it looks when it's beat up, that's an important one, accuracy, sizing, loom legibility, tool functionality, its power reserve, bracelet, comfortability, water resistance. Is it appropriate for every occasion? Does it fly under the radar? And just its overall wearing experience. Now I wanted to start off with something that wasn't on that list because it's very important to a lot of people. How accessible are these watches? And recently I was out of town and went into a Rolex AD that I have no association with. I've never been there, no purchase history, nothing like that. And this isn't scientific, but this is just what I heard from them. I'm gonna pass on to you as of the date of filming this video. I asked, how long would it take for me to obtain a Rolex Explorer 2? And they estimated between six to eight months for the black dial, eight months to about a year for the polar dial. And I said, you know, go horse, thank you very much. How long would it take me to obtain a Submariner? And they said around two years. So that just goes to show these watches still aren't quite that accessible. I mean, the way it's looking now in the world, it seems that's kind of the new norm. You're gonna have to wait for these watches. I mean, I was even in Omega, just kind of wetting my whistle for the one of the, their popular watches, just looking at it. And he even told me three to four months to get an Omega. So take it what you think, take it as it is. That's, it's important for a lot of people, but the wait time for these watches is still pretty long from what I'm hearing, especially if you're a brand new customer. I know that's a huge problem for a lot of people, but I mean, this was one AD, shop around, might be able to get those times a little bit lower, or even the secondhand market, the prices are coming way down real quick. On to the history. I don't wanna to spend too much time on history because it's so subjective what history you think is cool and what's not cool. So just a quick overall view, my view, I guess, my personal opinion is, I mean, the Rolex Submariner, the most iconic watch of all time. So, you know, it's got a foot in the door for pop culture. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Celebrities wore it back in the 60s and 70s, made it real popular. And just what it's done ocean-wise, how Rolex has really advertised it, for lack of a better word, got the accolades out there. It's, it's impressive no matter how you look at it. And again, that's why it's the most iconic watch in the world. So for history, the Submariner, it's got to get a 10 because it just, it is. It's the most iconic watch in the world. Very few people can argue that. Maybe the Speedmaster from Omega. But anyway, 
Rolex Explorer 2, I think it has a great history. I mean, the Rolex Explorer 1, first watch supposedly on the top of Everest. That's incredible history. It's done amazing things. Scientists and explorers still wear this to this day and Rolex posts a lot about that. And I, me personally, much rather see a true explorer scientist wearing a Rolex than a celebrity. So, I mean, history aside, what it's done, I think it's not quite as good as a Submariner, but I still have to give it an eight for history because it's amazing what it's done. And if you look back in the archives, scientists again and explorers wearing this watch, what they've done. You can say the same for the Submariner, a little bit more so actually, but I still think it really deserves a strong eight in the history category. Quick interruption. If you are interested in my artwork, we are currently doing a mega sale because we have to clear out both my Los Angeles and Laguna Beach Art Studio for just a, an epic project coming up. I'm really excited about it. But if you want to use this opportunity, this one and only opportunity to get my artwork at such a discount, use the link in the description below to check out our online store. Durability, I can speak more to the Rolex Explorer 2 on this one because I've had it longer and it's been, I'll say it's been through hell. I've dropped this watch, it's been through every weather condition. It's been up to 100, I think 125 degrees is the hottest it's been in. And I think negative eight Fahrenheit is the cold that it's been in. And it's worked flawlessly. If you wanna go back, I did have a problem with it. I think it was magnetism. We still don't really know. In past videos, I thought I broke the watch, but it actually fixed itself by just letting the power reserve wind down and almost reset itself. So I'm a, we're still not sure, I even sent it into Rolex. They're not sure if it was magnetism, but it fixed itself. So this is a very, very, very tough watch, very durable. And I can't quite speak too much for the Submariner because I've only had it a month and a half, but I would just have to assume it's about the same. I've had no issues. I haven't dropped this one yet, but I have, it's banged it up, hit it up against a tree, scratched it on a rock. Uh, if you want to think durability, you know, scratch wise, I'm talking more kind of mechanical and it always works kind of thing. So scratches, we'll get into that a little bit later. But durability, I can't see why I can't give these both just a nine because there's no reason why I would think the Submariner, it's very, very similar movement to the Explorer is any different. So I'm gonna give these both a nine for durability. And just to finish the point on when I think I got this magnetized or thought I broke it, I'm not exactly sure what this is rated to Gauss wise, but I know my assistant helped me on this shoot. We were scanning cars, had a brand new Seamaster from Omega and that's 15,000 Gauss and his watch got messed up too. So it was, I don't quite know what happened during that weird little scan session, but just to go to show you, this one fixed itself and the Seamaster actually didn't have to be sent. Both were sent in, but his was really messed up. So I don't know what it was, if it was magnetism, but just wanted to finish that point. How has the watch looked all beat up and scratched? Now this is where my opinion's gonna differ, I'm sure from a lot of people. I love my watches all beat up, scarred, scratched, dented. I think that just gives it a great look, especially, uh, I'm gonna show my hand early on this one. For the Explorer 2, this one takes, I think, a clear win on this. Because even though, you know, the radiated machine bezel on this watch is metal, but it takes on the most beautiful scratches. And I know that sounds funny, but I just love how this takes on scratches. They're not big and obvious, they're just clean little scratches. They're, each one's a memory. And I really like that. And I think this watch looks so good, scratched up, beat up. So it's getting a perfect 10. Whereas the Submariner, I'm gonna scratch and beat this watch up. It is still gonna be kind of more my formal watch because let's face it, it is a prettier watch, a little bit more of a jewelry piece, you know, shiny, clean. I prefer actually the aluminum, the older bezels pre-ceramic. I Again, I like how things take on scratches. This ceramic isn't gonna take on any scratches. It's always gonna be nice, clean, and shiny. Nothing again wrong with that. It's all personal taste. I just like my watches to show the wear and tear, the memories, the scratches. Every scratch has a memory kind of thing. And I'm not gonna get that on the Submariner. And I'm a little wor not, worried, not worried's too strong of a word. I'm a little hesitant about the scratches on this one, just in the way that the 
Front's always gonna look pristine with the non-scratch sapphire and also to the non-scratch ceramic bezel. And so the front's always gonna look nice, which could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on you personally. But the sides are gonna get really scratched up and the brace is gonna get really scratched up. We'll see how it looks over time, but I'm gonna give this one more of a seven because it just doesn't take on the wear and tear, the, what's a good word for this? The ambiance of the wilderness, as well as I think the Rolex Explorer is going to, or does actually. Accuracy. A good tool watch needs to be accurate. And both these are, especially for mechanical movements, the Rolex Explorer 2 is about a quarter second fast per day. And the Submariner is just under a second fast a day. So these, as long as they're within that plus minus two, that Rolex certifies them at, I think that's a win-win and incredibly accurate mechanical watches. I'm gonna give them both a nine. No, you know what? There are very few other mechanical watches this accurate. What the heck? Now, let, 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 let's go, sorry. <laughs> let's go with a nine for both of them. The Grand Seiko Spring Drive is rated to be a little bit more accurate than these watches, but it's got electronics in them. And I just, with all the cold weather I deal with, I do want, I just want to stay away from any electronics, even though it doesn't have a battery, it's still mechanical. I don't trust it, so I stick with true mechanical automatic movements. Thank you so much for watching. I really, truly do appreciate it. Part two of this video will be coming out soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Also hit subscribe if you're not subscribed already. It really helps us out. We're really trying to figure out if this channel, I like doing it, but is it really worth our time and effort? Because our main goal here is to sell artwork and be out photographing while showcasing the beauty of nature and why it needs to be protected. So please, if you can help us with the support, um, if we don't get the support, I'm sorry to say we will have to limit this channel, but I want to keep it going. Some others think we can put our time elsewhere. So please prove them. I'm looking at you wrong and give us, yeah, support us how you can. Thanks again. Cheers.